how do I become an amazing student on my clinical rotations? In this video, guys, I'm not going to only share with you how to become an honor student or how to get your attending to like you. I've done that in the past, but instead, I'm going to give you a simple system on how to go from start to finish on any rotation and simply 10x your results and become a freakishly awesome clinical student. And you're going to be hard to ignore. And if that sounds attractive, I'm going to give you that system after this intro. <laughs> All right, guys, what is going on? Lux here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. If you're new to this channel and you want to learn how to not only survive on your medical journey, but thrive, then consider giving this video a like, first of all, and then subscribe to the channel and join the community. You'll also be helping me get to my impossible goal for the year, which is 25,000 subscribers. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. But again, in this video, we are going to talk about how to 10X your results as a clinical student, not just how to get honors, not how to do well, on your shelf exam. If you follow the steps in this video, you're gonna be able to do all of those, but also take yourself to a completely different level. And by the end of your clinical rotations and your third year, you're gonna be leaving most of your peers in the dust. And if that sounds attractive, let's get into the system. So the first part, guys, is on a daily level, you need to be creating a list of need to know. It sounds weird, but as we're creating our to-do list, as we're taking care of our patients, there are gonna be things that we're taught, things that come up that just doesn't make sense, right? My attending, for example, may be teaching me about an EK KG and I may be nodding along, but half the stuff doesn't even seem like English. It doesn't make sense. So what you can do is just have a way. Um, I usually have a sticky note on the bottom of my patient's charts and I just write everything that I need to look up that night. Uh, anything that didn't make sense, an acronym that I don't know what it stands for, a medication that I don't really understand what it's used for, anything, a disease. When you first start a rotation, you're going to have a huge list of need to know. It makes sense. You still are mastering the basics, but every single day, you're only only goal is aside from whatever studying you're giving yourself is before I go to bed I'm going to be looking up every single thing on here some things are gonna be very quick you're gonna be able to Google a term really quickly and then realize oh that's what that stood for I understand that anyways or you may just have to watch a quick video and then understand the concept but make sure it's a goal for you at the start of a rotation for you to create a list of need to know and every night get through that list what you'll find guys is as you progress day in and day out towards your end of your rotation, you're gonna master the basics pretty quickly. Your classmates are still gonna be working on the basics because they're not keeping a list of what they wanna look up. Instead, they're relying on other resources. They're relying on like UWorld and they hope it shows up on their practice questions. That's a fine technique for doing decent on the shelf exam, but if you're proactive on answering the questions that you're weak at, you're going to get to the advanced topics much quicker. And a couple benefits come out of it. One, you're just gonna look comfortable on the rotation. Your attending says something, your resident says something. It feels natural because you looked it up and you don't have that gap in your knowledge anymore. Your classmates may honestly still may do that nod that we always do, but really not understand what the topic is. But you're gonna be able to use that topic and apply it to your patient. People are gonna be able to see without you even bragging that you know what you're doing, you know what you're talking about. So that comfort level is going to come out if you keep a list of need to know and cross it off on a daily basis. The second thing that comes off is you do better on your shelf exam and here's why. Normally we study, we do practice questions and then we try to review it um, the last couple of weeks before the exam. Doing this technique, guys, you tend to remember things much better. You know, those questions that show up in your self-exam, the ones where you've had a patient with that disease or you've treated somebody with that medication, those are like, you know, low-hanging fruits, easy money, um, questions that you love to see. The more you start doing a list of need to know, you're basically going to be giving yourself more opportunities to have low-hanging fruits and easy money questions. So I found that, you know, whenever I would do it, even if my patient didn't have a specific disease, if an attending mentioned disease, Disease, I would just write it down quickly look it up and it usually sometimes that would show up on the exam and I don't think I would have learned it otherwise I wouldn't have learned it through UWorld or another practice question or review book but I learned it just because I had to look it up and I felt comfortable it was probably a hard question for most of my peers but I had seen it you know in one sense or another and so it helped me do well on those shelf exams so just keeping a list of done keeps you more comfortable for those questions that most people are put on their toes for so make sure you do the list of done if you want to do well on your shelf exam now the final bit that comes with keeping a list of done and basically working on your gaps of knowledge from the very start is every rotation that you go through guys, you're going to have less and less um, gaps. 
you know, even if you're on ob rotation, then you go into internal medicine, and then you go to family and neuro, all those are different, but medicine still overlaps throughout many fields. And so if you know how certain medications work in one uh, pa patient population, you're going to be able to apply similar principles in another. There's going to be less for you to learn. But if you're still trying to learn how to treat blood pressure when you're in internal medicine, then relearn it when you're in neurology, you know, that's just extra effort that you could have been using to master uh, topics within those specific fields. So as you go through your list of need to know and you start mastering things, you're going to have less basic concepts to master on new rotations and you can move quicker to advanced topics. You're going to be that student where everyone's like, ah oh, man, he's so smart or he or she are so smart and they just know what they're doing. You want to get to that point. So I promise you guys, if you create a list of need to know, cross it off on a daily basis by the end of your rotation you're going to be just on a different level and keep doing that over rotation over rotation i promise you you're going to just be able to 10x your results and that's what really you want because you want to become the best version of a clinician that you can possibly be so that's my simple system guys on how to become a 10x clinical student at the start create a list of things that you don't know look them up fill in those gaps and keep at it and you are going to become just much more comfortable with the material at the very end. You're just going to see how far you are compared to your classmates and that's where you want to be, right? So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, just comment down below. Let me know one thing you're going to plan to take away from this video or any questions you guys have about your clinical rotations. Honestly, you could say hi. I'm more than happy to just kind of communicate, interact with you guys in the comment section. So go ahead and comment down below with your comments. If you did like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to this channel and join the community help me get to that 25,000. this is where we are right now hopefully the slider shows up um, but with that being said guys thank you guys so much for watching and before i close off i quickly want to say if you want more help on your clinical rotations join the clinical guide which is one of my newest projects that i'm currently working on and you can get a link in the description where you can learn more about it as well as help me in the creation and get first dips when it comes out so go ahead and add your name to that link in the description uh, but with that being said guys i'm going to stop babbling and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching